Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to be doing a memory overclocking video. We're going to be looking at 192 gigabytes of DDR5 at 6000. So to do that, I am going to be installing all this RAM in the latest PC that I built via the live stream builds that we've done. So this is my MSI Godlike build with the 9950X. So to do this, to make this video possible, I had to pull the RAM out of two other computers. So my new Intel Core Ultra computer and then my 9800X 3D gaming computer. Both of them had one pair of these. So the Intel had 96 gigabytes at 6400. And then the Ryzen 9800X 3D also had 96 gigabytes at 6400. So to make this video possible, basically had to take all the RAM out of both of those computers. So now both of those computers as you can see, my 9800X3D computer over there is just kind of dead right now. But we're gonna show how to do like a high-end workstation build without a Threadripper, but with the Ryzen 9. All right, the one thing to remember when you're installing the memory, if you're going to be you're running four sticks of memory, which most likely means you're gonna be running two separate kits, the first thing, my first recommendation is make sure you buy two of the exact same memory kits. So these are both from G-Skill, but they're literally identical memory kits. So this one is a 2X48. You can see this is a 2X48 gigabyte kit right here. And this one is the exact same one. Although the thing is they were probably manufactured at different times, meaning they're different from different batches. So there could be some slight differences in the impedance due to like manufacturing tolerance variations. So what that means is you want to isolate them from each other, meaning that the memory layout on DDR5 motherboards like this is the first, the first memory slot is A1, the second one is A2, the third one is B1, and the fourth one is B2. So A1, A2, B1, B2. I want the first kit of memory to be only on channel A, so A1 and A2. So this one is gonna go on the first two, and then the second one is gonna go on the second two, on the B channel. So that's how we're gonna set these up, so that way we can get it to work properly. That's basically step one. Step one is install the RAM in the correct memory slots. Okay, so after you install all that RAM, the best thing to do is to clear the CMOS and then just power it on. So I've cleared the CMOS so that it basically starts with the stock BIOS settings so it doesn't get confused. Start fresh on the BIOS when you're adding this much memory. So now we just have to wait for the long memory training to complete. And this initial memory training procedure is probably going to take quite a long time, several minutes, because it's a high amount of memory and it takes a long time to figure out what to do. Basically what's gonna happen is it's gonna set it to 3600 mega transfers because that's the maximum supported speed for this much memory. And anything above that is considered an overclock, which also means that anything above that is not guaranteed to work. So your mileage may vary on this sort of thing. Okay, so once in the BIOS, we're gonna go to the advanced menu the default for 192 gigabytes, as you can see on the right, is 3600. So we're going to set the memory speed manually. We are not going to load XMP. We're going to manually set it to 6000 FCLK. We're going to say 2000. The voltage VSOC, we're going to do override mode 1.2 volts. And then the VDD VRAM 1.4. And VDD Q is 1.4, it's gonna max out. Actually, we can do 1.35, because I know that'll work as well for this memory kit in particular. So that is pretty much all we need to do. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I guess advanced DRAM configuration. So the only other thing, maybe we can set the manual timings. I'm going to go 48 on this. 48. 48. 48. I just want to see if I can get it to post. 48. 
and 103. And DRC will do 154. You can try to tighten this later, but I would advise trying to, to do... I would advise against doing too much. Okay, after setting it, I'm going to run Memtest 86 now to see if it's stable at 6,000. Because you can see we're running it at DDR5 6,000. We have pretty high latency because I haven't bothered to change anything. But we are running it at a really low voltage, I think. 1.1 volt, although I think I set it to 1.35. I don't think this is reporting it correctly. But those are the timings that I set. So let's go ahead and do the start the memory test here. And what I'm wanting to look for is our errors on the right hand side there. That indicates that the memory is not stable. So it's a good idea to do this if you are serious about trying to run this much RAM. You really, really need, and I can't stress this point enough, you really need to have a specific use case that requires you to use this much RAM. Otherwise, if you're just trying to build a gaming computer, this is way too much work for just playing games. Like, literally, if you just want four sticks of memory, you should do what I did in my live stream build and just go with 96 gigabytes max. Because that's significantly easier than this. This is just way too much trial and error and way too much clearing CMOS and try, especially if you're trying to tune the memory. So at this point, I just want this to work with 100% stability. And that's the ultimate goal here at 6,000. So we're gonna let this run for, I don't know how long, but a pretty long time. And if it can do four passes, then I think we're good. Okay, so after much trial and error, uh, this is what I was able to get working with stability. So you can see we are running 192 gigabytes of system RAM. This is the Zen timings on the MSI Godlike. So to give you guys an idea. For some reason, VSOC, I guess I left it on auto. I thought I had it in 1.2 volts override mode, but I guess, I don't know, it, it's 1.25. But the memory voltage is 1.35. The VDDIO, I think, on this version of Zen Timings is reporting incorrectly, so I would just ignore that. It's It should be 1.35. We can use hardware info to also verify it, but you do want to run a stability test to make sure that your memory is still. You don't just want to set it and go into Windows and expect everything to work. Uh, if you copy my settings, if you have the godlike, this will most likely work. It's probably duplicate. You can probably duplicate these without too much trouble provided you have the exact same motherboard. Okay, and then here, just to show the F clock is two gigahertz, the mem clock, U clock is uh, three gigahertz. So, and our VDDIO 1.35 and VSOC says 1.2. I don't know why Zen Timing says it's 1.25. I don't know which one is to be believed here, but that is basically it in terms of the settings. You, we have all four DIMMs populated in the system. So that's, that's basically gonna be it. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do. It's definitely much easier to get 48 gigabytes running at 8,000 than getting 192 gigabytes running at 6,000, but if you want to copy paste these settings, especially the proct ODT values that you see here, if you want to manually set all of these, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, and then let me know if that works for you, but do note that you have to test stability. I used Memtest 86 and it was good for like 90 minutes. I think we ran one, I did like one full test suite. It passed all the tests with zero errors. We'll do a couple of tests in the operating system, but yeah, this is, that's pretty much it. It's, I do not recommend doing this unless you really, really need this much memory. I cannot stress that enough. If you just want four sticks of memory, I recommend four times 24 because those are single rank DIMMs. They are much easier to tune. This is much harder to tune. We are running pretty loose timings right now. I could probably set the TCL 
so 40 and it'll probably work and then leave the rest of them as is um, but that's going to be more testing for later anyway guys hope you guys found this video useful and i will see you in the next one thanks